Hello and welcome to Conjuring Rock. Today I'm going to show you how I load my fishing kayak on top of my car solo. Full disclosure, I'm not going to say that you're not going to break your back trying to do this. Uh, it's still a little tricky by yourself, especially with a 90 pound fishing kayak. It's doable, so just be careful. Watch your back, lift with your legs. Anyways, let me show you how I do this. First off, I need a towel or a bath mat or a piece of yoga mat will also do. Um, I just have this bath mat. It's kind of funky. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the back of the car um, because I'm gonna be sliding the kayak on the back and I just don't wanna damage the car. If you are concerned about your vehicle and busting your window or uh, scratching your vehicle, I suggest you do this with a friend the first time so you can like take your time and see where the kayak's sitting. I'll show you what I mean and what to look for. So I actually use uh, cam straps to strap down my boat. It's uh, just this really simple system. It's just like a tension. You just drag it down, pull it down, and it uh, cinches on itself. And then you push the button to release it. Um, they work quite well. Uh, this is rated for, I don't know, a thousand pounds or more. Uh, they're pretty good. Cam straps, look for them. These ones are by NRS. Uh, you can get them at Frontenac Outfitters with the Frontenac Outfitters branding if you want, or there's other companies that make them as well. I always do two straps on the body of the boat and then one strap on the, the bow. If I'm gonna be driving like two hours or more, I'll, I'll strap down the stern as well. Um, I'll tie that down, but for the most part, I think, uh, I think it's by law you gotta do the, the bow. Check the laws in your area. They, they could differ. You could have different requirements. And to uh, tie down the bow, I actually just use my, my painter's line, my bow line. Um, I keep this on the kayak so that if I ever have to like use a washroom while I'm fishing, I can just like pull up to shore, tie the boat off, and uh, I'm good. I don't have to worry about it floating away. I don't have to pull it up onto the rocks or anything. Okay, so now you're gonna like slide it off or like walk it, rock it off. Watch. So you can kind of pull it or like go like this, balance it. And once you get it to a certain point, very carefully rest it on your vehicle. Dropping it down slowly. Now here's where things get a little hairy because if you're not careful, you gotta watch this end because this end could slip out from underneath you and down comes the kayak on the car, maybe on you. It's not a good thing. I've had a fishing kayak fall on me. <laughs> True story, that. Okay, so now that we're here, we're at the side, I've got it secured. I'm just gonna kind of lift up and try and pull it out of the way and then get it down to the ground. So just try not to, oh, before I bring it down, what you wanna watch for when you're putting it on your vehicle is how far your window sticks out here. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a gap between my yak and the car. So it's not actually touching the window. It's a big thing. You don't want to make contact with glass. All right, now this is the struggle part. And it's down. Now you can, uh, I carry it from the side if I'm not going too far. It's, it's okay, you just kind of do a shuffle. You can also drag your kayak, although I don't recommend it. Grab it by the nose, get it up on the stern. There's usually a plastic protector on that end that will uh, take some abuse and you can replace it if it really gets bunged up. But that's how I get it down and how I carry it around. Now, getting it back up, a little tricky, but it's possible, like I said. I'm gonna make sure this is accessible so I can uh, get it from the front of the car here. But I start at the bow, lift the bow, carefully walk it up because the stern, the stern's gonna wanna slide out on you. So I get like right underneath my kayak here and I just drop it down on me and the car. I don't know if you caught that. I drop it down on me and the car and then I, uh, then I slide it up. Yeah, then I slide it up carefully because <laughs> as you're sliding it up, it might wanna travel to the left or right. And uh, if you have that happen, well, <laughs> you don't want your kayak falling off the side of your car. Of course you want to get it as center as possible, kind of like where you'd be sitting in the kayak. Give it a rock, it seems to be balanced. V 
these uh, foam blocks, so I recommend these, especially if you're going on like these hard racks, these hard roof racks. You can also just use some pool noodles if you wanted to and just put a cut down it and slide it over and tape it on. But anyways, these, these uh, foam blocks work well. They protect your kayak. When you're strapping this down, if it's really hot out, there is a chance that you could kind of like put a bit of a warp in your kayak with some materials, some kayaks. I don't know about this one, but possibly. So just be careful when you're strapping it down. Don't use a ratchet strap. Ratchet straps are notorious for busting boats, not just fishing kayaks, but like canoes. Like, look at Adam's canoe. See what I mean? Isn't that horrible? <sighs> Don't use ratchet straps. Use cam straps and rope. You're gonna wanna tie your boat down so that if you have to make any adjustments, you're gonna be on the passenger side. Let's say you had to pull over on the side of the road and make adjustments to your boat. You don't wanna be on this side of the road in live traffic trying to fix your your knots or whatever it is, or cinch it down. Just do it on the other side. But instead of going from side to side to strap your boat down, what I do is I take my cam buckle. I don't go too long because I don't want to hit my car. And I just launch it over, go underneath, and then go over again. Big thing with fishing kayaks is when you're using these cam straps, the uh, the, the flat webbing here. Um, when you're going across this gap of the actual deck of the boat, air can get kind of passing underneath that and starts vibrating those straps and makes a horrible noise, but it also like, can really wear your straps down really fast. So, in order to avoid that vibration and noise, put a couple twists in your strap. Thank you, Kendra, for showing me that trick. Put a couple twists in your strap and uh, you'll be good to go. Something I like to do is I always like to put a knot behind the cam strap as well. Just a loose one. Just so if it deci decides to slip a little, it's gonna catch that knot and hopefully stop. I've never had these cam straps slip on me or fail on me. I've been using them for a while. Well, I hope you found that helpful. I hope it gets you out on the water by yourself. But again, don't go breaking your back trying to do it by yourself if you can't do it. I mean, it's... It's, it's a heavy boat. These are not light vessels. I do a lot of fishing and camping on this channel, so if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button, and uh, we'll catch you later.